Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Joan Urbanowitz, loving mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister of our friends Elaine Unvarsky and Lois Williams, and aunt, Anne M. Nappy, devoted mother, mother-in-law of my friend Debbie, grandmother, great-grandmother and aunt, Louis D. Gavern, beloved husband, father of our friend Anne Marie and husband Paul Batico, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, member of the IAFF and the Scranton Firefighters Retiree Association, and their dear families and friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board meeting to be held June 12, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Tax Assessor's Report for the hearing dates held June 12th and June 26th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? No? Mr. Rogan is unable to attend tonight's city council meeting. Mr. Joyce is also unable to attend due to illness. The 2014 CDBG home and ESG applications are now available online at www.scrantonpa.gov under OECD. All applicants are, or excuse me, all applications are due on or before August 9th, 2013. OECD is seeking shovel-ready projects. Please be sure to complete all portions of the application. Scranton Tomorrow's Drive-In Downtown Movie Nights, hosted by filmmaker and ECDC film reviewer Jeff Boehm, will be held in Scranton on Courthouse Square beginning at dusk. The schedule of future movies includes Hairspray on June 27th, Ghostbusters on July 11th, Lorax on July 18th, and Rocky on July 25th. Everyone is invited. And uh, due to a number of requests that were made today uh, at our office, last night's zoning meeting will be replayed on ECTV channel 19 Friday, that's tomorrow at 12.30. Saturday and Sunday after the commissioners meeting and once more on Tuesday at 8 a.m. And finally, I'd like to wish all the fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers in our community a very happy Father's Day. I'd also like to wish my husband Dave, father of our four children, and grandfather of our six grandchildren, and my son Chris, father of two darling daughters, a wonderful Father's Day. And that's it. Um, just a, an addendum. Uh, tonight's movie, I guess the first movie, downtown movie, was supposed to be this evening. Yes. It's been postponed until Thursday, July 18th. Right. Unfortunately. <laughs> the Lorax.
Yes. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Thank you, Council. Good evening. Good evening. The, the, the government in Washington is toying with the idea of uh, cutting two billion people off the food stamp program and, and cutting it up to $90 a month for 850,000 people. You know, this is, I know that the, the, the food stamp program is full of adversities, you can stand in front of Price Right and see unbearable things happening. People trying to sell meat and so forth right out in the parking lot. But you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That seems like what the idea is. I'm getting to something. The state With all the cuts, every place you look, in every aspect of our lives, the governor has made cuts. And right here in the paper this week, the college presidents push for a middle income. They want an income bill for people from making 80 to 110,000, they're, they're not trying to restore cuts to people that have no income that need it to go to school. Everything is just backwards in Harrisburg. This is terrible. They're, they're not thinking of, of people. College isn't a necessity. Eating's a necessity. Clothing, paying your, 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 your house notes, Having heat in the winter, those are necessities. People making 80 to 110,000, they can afford to sacrifice something. Anybody that supports a bill like that's an enemy of the people of this state. We'll have the, half the people in this state probably don't have children in any kind of school. That's, that's what I've been told over and over again. You get out here and talk to people in West Side and South Side, Everybody I talk to, all the children come from the projects and from some younger people in Section 8 houses. The adults that, that are paying for everything, just they, they haven't got the, you know, like I always say, what are we getting for our dollar? Today when I walk my dog, I got a flood in front of the house. 20 years I don't have any sewers at the corner. You know, that depreciates my house. Then I don't have a sidewalk to walk on. Up the street there's cars parked on the sidewalk. I'm not getting nothing for my dollar. Now I'm supposed to pay for people's children that make 80 to 110,000 a year. You know, why why don't, why don't the why don't they sell a Mercedes or a house at the lake or something? They can't keep falling back, like I say, on the people of the city. The universities, which are sponsoring this, they have destroyed the city. They have stolen our tax base away from us. Now they want, you know, it's like asking for blood after everything else. You know. I forgot when it was, a couple years ago, I told you about the little girl told me that the, the rich white boys have taken our playground away where, at the Lackawanna, the medical school. Why haven't they given 50 or or $100 for a swing set or something? See, they, they don't care. That, that's just the opinion. That's my opinion, but these people, the association here, it says, the Association of Independent Colleges and University of Pennsylvania 
They don't care one iota about the people of this state. And this is shameful. The, the university bragged a few short months ago they generate $400 million in this city. Why don't they give scholarships instead of asking the taxpayers? Like I said, this is, these people are enemies to the, to the taxpayers of this city. I, I, you just can't support, we can't support a bill like this. Why, why doesn't the governor, why isn't he interested in people? He took away funding for these, you know, the, the poor that, to go to college, because I've talked to them. They can't go to trade schools or nothing. Now he wants this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Kapchunas. Good evening. My name is Carl Kapchunas. I'm a lifelong resident of Lower Green Ridge. I'm Good actually evening. here this evening with an invitation to everyone here and everyone watching. And also I have a question at the end. We'd like to invite everyone here to the Merry Mother of God block party, our annual block party. Everybody's in the mood for summer, so our block party is next weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And this year we have quite a bit of uh, entertainment that I think everybody will like. On Thursday night, it's family night. We're starting off with Damien the Magician, who'll be there between 6 and 8 p.m. He'll be doing close-up magic in addition to a stage show. After Damien the Magician is done, we have the Cameron Avenue Band between 8 and 11 p.m. And we, in the bar, we have Rich Jenkins, a guitarist. So we have quite a bit of entertainment on Thursday night for families. On Friday night, the entertainment is for everyone. Uh, we have the World Renowned. They're a fantastic band. They're called Picture Perfect. They play every year on Friday night. They're excellent. Now, this year on Saturday, we're trying something a little bit different. We're starting off with Italian singer Jim Sermonero between 5 and 6.30. And then we have a national recording act called the Tommy Guns Band between uh, 7 and 11. They're country and western. Unfortunately, I don't follow country and western, but they tell me they're a national recording act, and so it should be quite good. In addition to the usual uh, food and merriment that we have at our block party, our friends and neighbors up at the Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, they've been there for the last three years, and they have fantastic chicken and ribs. And let me tell you something, I had it last year, and it is delicious. But of course, like, you know, we also have your typical pizza, potato pancakes, and our potato pancakes are one of the best in the city, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and all the other traditional uh, food, and we have games for children, we also have games for adults. For the adults, we'll have the big six wheel, we'll have the money wheel, and uh, Irish poker, that's actually my stand. Uh, some of you actually had come up to our block party and, you know, played a game of Irish poker with me in the back. And we just hope everybody could come up there. And like I said, I went to rainy days now, and a lot of the churches are closing, and a lot of the fire companies aren't having their block parties anymore. And in my opinion, our, our block party is one of the best in the city, and we hope everybody can make it. Now, the question I have is, with the new signals in downtown Scranton throughout the city, the, the timing on those are terrible. Mm -hmm. I worked down at South State Bowling Lanes in South Scranton. I had an appointment at quarter to five over at Scranton Dodge. It took me 20 minutes to go two miles from South State Bowling Lanes to Scranton Dodge. Going through downtown Scranton at light on Adams Avenue, sometimes the traffic, you're, you're stopped for four minutes. I mean, today, going over there at the corner of North Washington and Lackawanna, I was stopped for three minutes. Is there, any, is there anybody I could call that you know of? Should I call PennDOT? Is it a DPW issue? Uh, where could we go from there? Because I mean, the, I mean you'd think it'd be progressive. When they used to have the other uh, traffic lights with the, what they call a Ferris loop or a loop detector, it was actually a loop that was into the concrete, they were a lot more accurate. I don't know what these cameras they have now. It seems like they're not picking up the traffic or they're not calibrated correctly, but is there anybody I could call or where could we go on this? Well, I do know that there have been many, many, many complaints about the traffic signals downtown and that the project has not finished, okay. uh, that they're still working on calibrating the lights properly. But I don't think it would hurt if uh, you and everyone else who's having, you know, or, or experiencing dissatisfaction with sitting at lights for three and four minutes well, I mean, at 20, a time. 20 minutes to would, go two miles is terrible. Right, which is, which is absolutely ludicrous. 
I don't think it hurts to call PennDOT. Or to be PennDOT, okay. Mm -hmm. And just tell them about your experience and where the, you experience the problems, oh, the intersections. And I think if enough people do that, you know, perhaps PennDOT will hasten the process a bit because I know it's been, it's been very trying, unacceptable what's going on with the traffic downtown. Okay, and one other thing I failed to mention, we're also having our usual book nook and dining around, but one other thing we're having brand new this year is a silent auction where we're gonna have better quality merchandise. And all you do is write down your bid on a, a slip of paper. When the auction is over, whoever has the highest bid will win. And like I said, we hope to see everybody up there at the corner of West Market and Wayne Avenue, Mary Mother of God Block Party. Thank you very much. And everybody have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Dobson. Good evening. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Good evening. Uh, good evening. A few weeks ago, uh, something was made, an announcement was made about animal control that I missed. Uh, we don't have an animal control officer due to illness or something. He, he's uh, had surgery. I, I, I don't believe he's back yet, but... Okay, uh, so in other words, uh, if, if you can, that EPAA number, if you have it, try to announce it during motions uh, so people keep up with that. Uh, I just bought a catch em live trap and I, I have to deal with something. Big mama, she's sweet, but she just keeps having kittens. And... Uh, Okay, uh, on taxes, and I'm going to talk a little bit about council. There's kind of a loose thing. Now, a lot of uh, heated remarks have been made during elections and so forth, and by comments by candidates running. And, you know, when you're being questioned, the shoe's on the other foot. It's okay to question Mayor Doherty. For instance, he opened up the door to job creation. I don't see it as a, a, as a mayor really being all that able to create jobs in a bad economy and with all the outsourcing. But when he said he created 6,000 jobs, or his administration did, uh, then you open up the door for criticism and that what you're saying isn't a fact or whatever, not necessarily a lie. Maybe you created 6,000 jobs and only lost 10, uh, 10,000, you know? That's just a fact. But uh, I'm kind of, it's, it's just a shame that certain comments were made during the elections uh, that uh, this council about this council because basically the job isn't complete and uh, there's been people lined up against uh, any ideas that came out of this council all the way like the uh, the uh, commuter tax and and various uh, ways of bringing in more money and uh, now that's self-evident to stand up come up here and blame this council, because that didn't come together, it's just silly. It's 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 not true, and uh, you tried, and and it's it's not it, it hasn't helped because the county is against us, uh, the the uh, courts are against us, and uh, uh, they don't want to see their constituents having to pay despite the fact that the city needs more money and uh, the var basically probably only one-third of the people employed within the city borders are from Scranton. There, there's another 22,000 or something like that mm -hmm. that are uh, commuters. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that being said, uh, you know, we're talking about sales taxes. Well, it, there was an article about two years ago where the small guy pays as much as 11% of his income in Pennsylvania taxes, and the big guy pays five. 
it, it's, just, it's just ludicrous to, uh, uh, all of those taxes are regressive, is, and what I, is what I'm saying. And if it gets handed over to the county per se, well, then we'll get our 40% or something like that. And, and on a dollar per dollar basis, we're just <clears throat> paying our own way anyway. So uh, I would urge any candidates for this next up and coming council to avoid any promises of lower taxes and such because <coughs> then the shoe is going to be on the other foot and it's not always pleasant. It's not always pleasant because then you will be questioned why you said, oh, we're going to lower your taxes and, and uh, suddenly taxes have to go up anyway. And uh, on those lamps, uh, I had a ride on the bus today. I didn't feel like taking my car to town. And the bus driver had a slam on the brakes because of a yellow. And that's one of the, my concerns is that the yellow lamp, the caution the signal is very, very short. I, I would uh, say less than two seconds. So uh, as soon as you see it, it's slam on the brakes timer, you're going through the intersection. And uh, a few weeks ago, I mentioned about uh, uh, Syria. And last week, I mentioned that a senator was talking to a person in the news that was identified as a kidnapper and terrorist and hostage taker. Well, tonight, I just heard on the news once again that, uh, that we're shipping more arms to Syria. And some of those so-called insurgents are basically Islamists, which is anti-American, basically, uh, to impose your religion on somebody else. And if you, you also might note that in Turkey, there's demonstrations about Islamic control of the government. So uh, if you do have some spare time, please get out there and get to your senators and congressmen and tell them, no thanks, we got enough of a knife in our back over Afghanistan. Thank you and have a good night. Thank and don't you. forget the bok, bok, bok. Uh, next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, I'd just like to start off by uh, echoing a comment Mr. Dobson made. I you know, standing back there, I absolutely agree. It's something I've said uh, numerous times from this podium when we talk about all the promises, the empty promises that these council candidates made in this last election. I kind of find it amusing and, and quite comical. Um, he talked about how they, they all preached how we can avoid all of our problems by not having to lower taxes and, and simply by making cuts. And quite frankly, next year at this time, I'm, I'm certainly uh, curious to see how this next council plans on doing that, lowering taxes and all these uh, delusional promises they made. Um, you know, it's funny, last year at this time is when we, we started to realize that we were going to be in for a rough summer and that, you know, we didn't have bright days uh, ahead of us. And yet, all these council candidates and this soon-to-be new council members, I don't recall any of them running down to this podium offering their services to the city, and they all seem to care so much during the election, yet we never see them here. And that's one thing that's always baffled me through all the years I've, I've, I've attended these meetings is, you know, they all come around election time and make every promise in the world and promise us that they're going to turn this city around. And yet, weekly, we never see any of them here. So I find it hard to believe that they have a clue as to what's going on. And quite frankly, I don't feel they do. I think we're going to have a new council majority that uh, is going to take us back where we were. And I think that uh, we're, we have a bleak future with this next council coming in because it's my absolute belief that none of them have a clue. And we're going to go back in time. And it's unfortunate because they don't have an understanding of where this city uh, truly stands financially because, number one, they haven't been here. You know, when you're running around, time make, running around town making these promises, I just find it hard to believe that uh, you can actually uh, serve on council. But moving on, uh, that's something we'll be dealing with next year. I'd like to talk about the Capalis Avenue pool. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get the opportunity to attend uh, the neighborhood group meeting the other night, but I know that the uh, Capalis Avenue pool was... Uh, of discussion at that meeting, and I understand Councilman Lask, and I believe you did attend that meeting. Myself? Uh, yes. I was unable this week. It was my oh, work okay. schedule. All right. Yeah. Um, I was uh, mis misinformed then. 
Um, you know, I, I've been coming here year after year as have other speakers, and we've um, been fighting to have neighborhood pools open. And thankfully, this summer, um, that's going to come into fruition. But unfortunately, you know, Capellas Avenue won't be open. And it, it truly frustrates me because I just really bothers me that we can't fulfill a simple thing. And, and I know for some people it may not seem simple, but it's a, a simple necess necessity of operating a swimming pool that a city just cannot do. And I think that's a, a quite embarrassing thing. Um, I'm, I'm quite disturbed by that. I think it's quite frankly disgraceful. I think we've spent too much time, or this administration has spent too much time for the last 12 years, putting all its time and effort and energy into Nail Park. And I think we've forgotten that we have other pools in this city. And we have residents that have every uh, right to, to utilize these swimming pools. I mean, Capellas Avenue, um, I understand, is the, the newest neighborhood pool. And it's not going to be open for, I believe, this will be four summers in a row now. And I, I just, I don't understand where our, our mindset is here. I don't understand where we are here. And I think that uh, moving forward, we need to find a solution. Um, a suggestion I, I had talked about with one of the residents before the meeting tonight was, you know, I know we have uh, programs such as Adopt a Park, you know, Adopt a Highway. I mean, perhaps they can consider some sort of agreement with the city where they could adopt that pool for the summer with stipulations that the city still has to maintain the insurance and provide the lifeguards and all the, uh, the uh, tools necessary to, uh, to upkeep that pool, but that the residents in that neighborhood would uh, donate their services to maintain that pool so that it can be open each summer. Um, I think maybe now is the time, maybe we have to be a little creative um, because obviously what we're doing now isn't working. Um, and I, once again, I still commend Council's efforts, particularly Councilman Joyce, for, for uh, working cooperatively with the mayor and getting that, that uh, money from Wells Fargo, who was gracious enough to, to come forward and, and help us get the other pools open. But the fact of the matter is the children in the Pinebrook neighborhood are going to suffer another summer, and I don't think it's fair. So I think moving forward, we need a realistic plan to ensure that those, children's have a, those children have a place to recreate. Uh, on to the University of Scranton. Uh, last night the zoning board denied their variance and I want to commend them for that. Uh, my hope is that council will follow their lead and also deny uh, approval of their expansion on the hill. Uh, as we've been talking about for a few weeks now, uh, the university is looking to tear down a piece of the city's history in the YWCA uh, building. Uh, it's my understanding when that building at years ago when it was turned over to the university that they were going to make repairs of that building and ensure that it stood there for years to come and they were going to protect that piece of history uh, that's here in the city. We have very few uh, buildings or structures left in this city that have that amount of history. And we, when we talk about the university and its, its continuation of expanding throughout the hill section, I think it's a very uh, serious situation and I think it's caused a lot of problems for this city because we've allowed them to continue to take properties off the tax rolls and, that, and that's a very uh, troubling thing. I think we've allowed them to get a free ride for decades. Uh, I think they're bullies with money. You know, we, we keep hearing from people that, that support the university that they provide so much services to the city and they, they contribute so much in, in permits and fees. Uh, if that's their claim to fame, I, I think that's a very, uh, I think it's a joke. Uh, what's, what's the big deal? I mean, that, that's lunch money to them. The fact that we're going to brag that they, they contribute and pay for licenses and permits uh, is a joke. I mean, if that's your argument, then I think you got another thing coming. Uh, they need to be put in their place once and for all. They need to be held accountable. As somebody cited earlier tonight, it's a, it's a, a business that generates over $400 million a year, and they give the city of Scranton $175,000. How could you possibly stand in support of that? I think that, uh, you know, I just don't see how that's possible, how you could support an institution that does that. Uh, they need to be held accountable. <coughs> And we need to continue to pursue payments in lieu of taxes from them. And I'd ask council tonight to deny what they're trying to do. As Mrs. Evans stated last week, what are we going to, at some point 20 years from now, make this, are we going to turn Scranton and call it the University of Scranton, the city of the University of Scranton? Because that's where we're headed if we don't do something now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Andy Spraglia, citizen of Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. You're 6A. Does this have to do with the uh, A&A auto building being revamped into some kind of a commercial establishment? This just deals with the parking facility. I realize that, but there's a reason for it. Is it 
in conjunction with the development of the ANA Auto. We have no information well, other than that. Obviously, they need parking if they develop the ANA Auto. That, that, that was my argument anybody. last week, I believe. What they should have done was say we we're going to convert it to loft apartments, and we would build them a garage. Simple as that. <laughs> okay, on your B, that has to do with the handicap signs. You mentioned it, it was a little foggy on it. Did you say there would be a fee entitlement with this, these signs? Uh, yes, there's a renewal fee each year. Do you realize that anybody can park at a handicap sign that has a handicap plate? Or placard? Why would you ask somebody to pay ten dollars when somebody up the street can park there with a handicap sign? I mean, on his car, and he's legally entitled to park there. Well, actually, the um, program was designed by the police chief, and it's being enacted so that we can get a turnover for the handicapped parking signs because there are so many in so many blocks where they're no longer needed because the individual has either moved or is deceased now and yet the signs remain so we're trying to get a handle on that so that we will have ample signs in order to provide them for those who legitimately need them now. And we, at this point, have no signs to address those needs. I realize, but you haven't addressed the problem of anybody with a handicapped sign could park there. We're paying enough to the police department. In fact, we're paying exceeding well to the police department for them to do that. I don't know why you think they're incompetent to do that. We need special legislation for it. Well, by having a renewal fee, it, it entails filling out an application annually that will verify whether that sign is still legitimate or not. And the system that we have right now simply doesn't work. I realize there's a lot of inconsistency with it, but you still haven't addressed the problem. Anybody, you're going to pay $10 they have that sign in front of my house. Somebody up the street with a handicapped sign could park in that spot. You want me to pay for someone else to park. And that's not quite right. No, I, I agree, but most likely if there's a handicapped person uh, up the street, as you say, very likely they have their own handicapped parking yeah, sign. Yeah, but you've got to realize, anybody with the sign, if I'm visiting somebody, I have a handicapped sign in my car. If I'm visiting somebody, I could park there legally. Mm -hmm. You can't change that. Why would you ask someone to pay for a sign that should be supplied with the taxes they're paying for services? May I respond? Sure. Most of the signs that are placed are at the request of an individual. And my belief is that upon making that request, you you should, that this $10 fee is incumbent upon you for making that request. Yes, somebody else may park there, but you're the one that has requested that the sign be placed there. Thus the fee. So it's better just to wait for somebody to put the sign up in front of the house and you park there anyway. But I mean, we're, we're <laughs> well, playing for uh, services. I realize the complexity of it, but you've got to realize a doctor has to certify that. You just don't get a handicapped sign. Right. You've got to have a doctor certified it as such. And that was a service we supplied to the residents of Scranton. We're paying tremendous amounts of taxes. And you keep on finding new ways to nickel and dime us. And that's not right. Well, I, 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 I don't need it. I have my own parking. I have my own drive. So it really don't affect me that much. But you realize that it, that's what would happen. And if I'm familiar with that one street you mentioned up there, where was it, on High Park Avenue, where everybody had a handicap sign? Mm -hmm. It's going to be murder up there. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I can, I'll, I'll just say I'll speak from a little bit of personal experience. Um, when my parents were alive, my dad had a handicapped parking spot um, toward very close to the end of his life. And uh, they had to 
of course, you know, as you said, receive um, the certification of his physicians, but they did pay for that spot. This was in Dunmore. And I can tell you, no one ever parked in that spot except for my parents. There was never a problem with it, with, you know, anyone, whether they lived in the neighborhood or they didn't. They saw the handicapped parking sign and, you know, never once did we have to ask someone to move. I realize that. I tried to avoid it myself, even though I have it on my car. But it, yeah, I it, think you that's can what most do people it. do. Yes, you can do it, but I think and most it's legal to do it. And now, would you address somebody in there? You're going to call the police? Went up and said, "Tow this car out. He's parking in my handicap sign," because that's what's going to happen. In that situation, but you know, as as I said, I think that most individuals who are handicapped and have such signs respect the situation and the needs of others as well. Well, this is no good into it. I, this, I tell what's going to happen. And I know it's going to happen because I lived in the city long enough to know it's going to happen. Because I heard this many, many times from other people who said somebody's parking in my handicap even though they had a handicap. And that's the way it's going to be. But the thing is, I have nothing against that. I just don't like the fee. I really don't think you should be charging them for that. That should be part of the city services, like anything else. I mean, surely we can come up with it. How much is it going to, how much do you think, oh, you were going to say how many signs are out and get every one of them to give $10. No, that's not the way to run the city. The city is going backwards fast. I don't know what's going to happen when you come up with that $60,000 man to run the parking meters. To, run four, to supervise four to six people. And what you're going to do, I read the other piece of legislation. That was a piece of garbage to come up with, and it's going to come on the agenda again as another piece of garbage, where you're parking six days a week in Scranton, going to almost 8 o'clock at night. I mean, that's ridiculous. You find more ways to oppress people than to help people. I told you before, if you really want to make extra money, the city generates electricity. They buy it. Why don't we buy it for most of the people of the city that wants to buy it? And that's money coming in that you would have without oppression. You, everything you do is oppressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Maurice Schumacher. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have uh, quite a bit to say about the YMs, or well, excuse me, the YWCA. If that's going to be brought off the table tonight, is that the intent to bring that legislation off the table tonight? I'm sorry. The what? Well, I, the, I, I didn't hear the, it. Un the University of Scranton and the the former YWCA yes. building, that's yes. going to be taken off the table tonight yes, and I discussed? Be, I will be making a motion for that. Okay. Um, I would like for you to name one thing in this city that honors or causes to re bring to memory the contribution of women to this city. The contribution of? Women. Nothing, right? Oh, it, is there something? Um, I, the, I'm just the only thing that comes to mind um, is the Green Ridge Branch Library, which was renamed the Nancy K. Holmes Library. For, yeah, for, for, yeah, for a fee of, what, ten or $15,000? Yes, a so gift. I think yes. the estate yes, uh, but, left that but amount of money and to the library. Not, and that's not, that's honoring women, but it's not the contribution of women to the development of this city, as the YWCA did. I do not personally think that the uh, HARB did a, an adequate job. I don't know what 
the uh, courtesy, what was the, what the definition of the courtesy review uh, refers to. I would think since it is a historical building, it should have been a full review and there are people in this city that have spent a good deal of time researching. I, uh, the university itself has given grants to uh, at least one of their professors to study the impact of that particular structure on the contribution of women in this city. I think it's time we start looking at things like that. I will ask you now, I, I agree with Mary Ann Wardell. She said, why there? I have a concern about while well, this so demolition or building is going on, what happens to the, uh, the transit of our emergency vehicles? That's widely used at, at that corner. It's going to totally dwarf and even perhaps the, the courthouse, but certainly uh, Elm Park Church. It doesn't, what the, that picture in the paper today, that rendering does not just doesn't fit in that in that corner, even if it was within their uh, institutional zone. They just built a brand new uh, science building. What are they doing with the old building? Why can't they do it there? Science, o a PT, OT, it all fits together. I'm sure the, the students who will be using uh, whatever facility is ultimately built for OT and PT uh, they'll be taking a lot of science classes. Why not put it, I think the old science building is very close. Why not do it there? They can go up eight stories there and it'll fit in with their structure. It's urban, it's not gonna open dwarf everything here. I think I would request that you, I thought you were gonna have a full hearing on this. That was my understanding, that there was gonna be a hearing on this legislation? No. I believe, no. Not to my knowledge. Okay, well, that was my understanding, but I would, uh, I would urge a, a no vote on this at, or to continue keeping it on the table until uh, you can do a little bit more research and see what the real impact of that building and its utilization was for women in the development of this city. Um, we deserve more than we've gotten, and I, I think another couple weeks and a little more research would be, uh, would go a long way. And I, again, I would suggest a counter proposal that the science building, the old science building be looked at for this building and uh, that would solve the problem, at least for now. So I do request uh, to keep that on the table. Uh, again, another piece of legislation, uh, I would urge a no vote on 6A. Uh, that's the gift that stops the giving. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about nonprofits and that we have too much non-taxable land and now we want to take a gift which we'll probably have to maintain it. I did drive by it. It is a paved lot. Uh, not in the world's best shape, but will we have to fix that? Will we have the liability? It's off the tax rolls. If the business is going in, I think the business should buy it. Otherwise, I, I think it's a, a, a bad deal for the, the taxpayers of the city. I'll return with the rest next week. And again, I urge mm -hmm. you to vote against that University of Scranton. I do have um, some information for you. Okay. Um, they are responses to requests that you've made and then letters showing that we sent for other responses. Okay, thank you. and I did want You're to welcome. Note tonight too. Uh, a, a thank you that the minutes are up to date uh, and I appreciate that. Thank and, you. I uh, also appreciate the work that, that Jim and Boris did on, uh, on the study on the PEL status report. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Mary Chalipko, resident city of Scranton. I debated about coming here tonight. I do want to, we are, in response to Doug, we are going to try to get a 
group together to have a meeting still to try to see what we can do to save the pool, not lose the city asset, how far we can go, what we can do, what approvals we need from the mayor and the union, but that is a work in progress. The issue I debated about, and I hope I get this correct, if anybody else can correct me with this, um, I talk about the little people, and Doug mentioned bullies tonight. The I've seen the neighborhood group step up. Uh, I saw the food truck people step up. And, um, you know, when they made a remark that struck me about the city maybe helping some of the establishments downtown, I don't know. I think everyone that watches the city council meetings should watch the city zoning board meetings as well. I think we witnessed, and I think they should watch the replay of especially this week's, even though it was a very long meeting, five-hour meeting, because I think we saw a true meltdown in City Hall last night, and I'm surprised that there weren't resignations on the table this morning. And it's a case of the little guy basically standing up against the big guys. Mm -hmm. If I get this right, the one case that I'm talking about involved permits issued by Mike Wallace to a large developer not following the city ordinance regarding the procedure of purchasing condemned properties. Uh, I commend, I believe his name was Donald Mamano, the landlord who filed this appeal um, for taking on these guys. It took guts. It was very tense here. They were very intimidating. They tried to be. What he was asking for was an even playing field. Basically, he, the, the theory was if we have to, there were other landlords here, if we have to follow city ordinances and procedures, why doesn't everyone else? When asked why he issued the permits, Mike Wallace replied he was told to do so. He was told to violate a city ordinance by the law department, and he specifically mentioned Kara Seitzinger, attorney Paul Kelly. Uh, the developers and their lawyers and everyone else, they stood up, numerous lawyers and at times very angry developers. They blamed money, jealousy, and later the five morons on the zoning board as the problem. My impression in the room, I don't know about anybody else watching, I was astonished to hear that from the city zoning officer. And I think no matter how the big guys tried to twist that, we got the true understanding of Mike Wallace's statements. If I were Mike Wallace, I probably would have pled insanity before I started naming names. I think by admitting to and directed by the law department, Kara Seitzinger and attorney Paul Kelly, I would expect their resignations. I think the little people are still on the move. I think that was a very exciting night for the city of Scranton. And I do hope there are resignations on the table. Maybe now the playing field will start to become a little more even in the city of Scranton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Mary, this is, oh. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry we've been playing phone tag. Uh, I do want to get together with you. If you're available tomorrow, uh, I'll give you a call in the morning. Okay. Sorry. Is that okay? okay? And Mrs. Chalipko, what I'm going to su suggest to you, I, I am going to talk about the pools under my motion. Uh, this evening. Uh, however, I believe what is going to work best to the neighborhood's advantage would be to uh, schedule a meeting with the mayor of all the volunteers, including council members, who wish to work on repairing and opening that pool this summer. And as I said, I, the mayor noted there are issues involving union contracts, uh, insurance, bidding, et cetera. But I do believe that bringing a group of community volunteers together to make this request and present him with a plan of how you intend to make this work I think that can go a long way. Um, we did discuss this at our neighborhood meeting on Tuesday, and there are also other neighborhood groups that have said they have been in similar situations and gave us some details on how they handled it in different parks in the city. So they as well would be interested in 
in attending some type of meeting like that as well, I'm sure. I would say the more sincerely interested individuals who are willing to roll up their sleeves, you know, and get involved and do the work, the better the, better the outcome is going to be for you. Well, I think there are more than the mayor would think. And I would Thank like you. to add that the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association has rolled up their sleeves and done a lot of hard work over the past few years, so their experience is telling. Oh, Definitely. I, that would be a... Yes. No, I, I know what you're I saying, agree. but just well, for But I'm public. saying that I think... Yep. Um, in other words, I very much want to see this pool opened, and I have for years. And from the very beginning, the first summer that pool closed, I railed against that and fought for that, and nothing ever happened. And though I'm still discussing it with the mayor, I believe that, you know, my, my urging, my suggestions aren't enough. And so what I'm suggesting, you know, to you tonight is what I think is going to be a much more effective, a much more uh, powerful uh, method of reaching your goal and convincing the mayor that this is the right thing to do when you do have so many people who are so interested and are willing to take this upon themselves because the city doesn't have the money to do it. So I should arrange a meeting with the mayor. Try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Schedule, but before you schedule it, I make sure that everyone is able to attend with you. I'm not suggesting a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Oh, no, never. I'm suggesting never. the entire group and come with your plans of what you, what you would like to do this summer, right now, starting in June. And I think you could be successful. I will do that, and I will get the group together. We need to kind of reorganize. And it's people all over the city. It isn't only Pinebrook. Right. And we've gotten cooperation from the Scranton Police Department, the chief. Um, I tend to bring up the bad, but there is a lot of good. And mm -hmm. it's not just Pinebrook. It's all over the city. The little people yes. have had enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else? This is Craig. Five eight. Chrissy took three weeks off in a row. Come on, your vacation's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Uh, very briefly, and then a few uh, during the legislation. Um, just one uh, comment on rental registration. Uh, the rental registration office, for want of a better term. Um, has been aggressively pursuing um, the implementation of the ordinance um, in the, the past week. What they've done is they identified 10 landlords who were the most egregious in not paying the rental registration fee. Uh, they identified those, seven, or those 10 and I believe, I'll use the word threatened, um, those landlords with the closure of their properties uh, sh should they not register and you know pay the the fees and um, I was told that um, seven have already responded by you know paying the rental registration fee and um, hopefully others will a and the next step I'm told is that they are now going to uh, they have identified those properties with delinquent refuse bills and that they are again pursuing the landlords with the threat of closure should those delinquencies not be paid. And, and so I, I think that what we're seeing is the, the implementation of the ordinance in the way in which we thought it would be implemented or used. It's not only increasing revenue, but it's also um, taking some control over the landlords and forcing them to comply with all city 
ordinances and um, hopefully improve the, the situation of, for tenants and for the city um, by doing this. And hopefully, uh, and, and I think also that the, by putting another person in that position, the rental registration assistant or whatever title we gave to it, um, I believe that the two people that are operating or um, implementing this are doing a great job and I think that's what was needed, was somebody to take control of it and, and, to, and, and to work with the ordinance to bring about the desired results. And um, I'd like to commend the people that are working there in, through rental registration and I, I think in the future this bodes well that um, we will continue to see you know, progress um, with this program. And that's all I have for now. And as I said, uh, some comments when for legislation. Thank you. And the only thing I'd like to add to that, I do, I, I was aware of uh, Councilman McGough's uh, announcement. The mayor had discussed that with me and said that uh, when, when all is resolved uh, on these delinquent garbage fees, et cetera, uh, and rental registration that the city's looking forward to possibly a million dollars in revenue as a result that was unanticipated. And I do commend the employees who are working diligently on this program. However, I think we also need to remember this should have and could have happened years ago. And it was allowed from 2008 forward to just disintegrate into nothing. And it only happened because of this council and the city reaching the edge of a fiscal cliff where this council had to keep pushing and pursuing every new avenue of revenue possible to save you, the taxpayers, from a crushing tax increase. And it took a great effort because, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it's been like moving a mountain and chipping away, chipping away, <laughs> chipping away at that mountain every day for the last three and a half years. And though you don't know it and you don't see it. This is what occurs every day, all day, behind the scenes. So I think, yes, it's a wonderful thing that this is now working well. And I believe it's going to continue to do so in the future. This is what it was meant to do. It was designed in this manner. But for some reason, it was either allowed to deteriorate or it was purposely allowed to deteriorate and that was wrong and it would still be the case today if it weren't for the constant chipping and nagging and working and efforts of this council and that attorney and these women who work in our office that's where the changes are coming from, ladies and gentlemen. And Councilman uh, Moskowitz? Could, could I just, I, I'm sorry, I, uh, add to that, I guess. Um, I forgot that we also have a, a letter sent from uh, Attorney Paul Kelly, city solicitor, to the um, single tax office yes. um, requesting that a meeting between the rental registration coordinators um, director of LIPS, the single tax office, um, that they meet and set up some procedure for the collection of the uh, mercantile taxes um, as that would apply to um, landlords that I believe we discussed either last week or the week before. Um, and also, uh, I did neglect that 
Um, and as for you, the businesses that come into town yes. for construction purposes, using out-of-state labor, who yeah, are, that, I, I was just uh, right, who are escaping payment of those taxes. I, I was just uh, doing the <laughs> yeah. the rental registration part, and, and also um, I, I think, as you mentioned uh, in, in a previous meeting, um, rental registration and all of this uh, are working hand in hand with NRS. Mm -hmm. who is who has been extremely helpful in in pursuing this and um, I think they should they too should um, you know be commended for the the help that they've given in um, in uh, implementing these this program and that was all thank you and councilman Lasco yes thank you <clears throat> first thing I like to do is to make a motion for resolution number 22 2013 to be taken from the table and put into seventh order. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it and so moved. Uh, next, uh, as, as uh, Ms. Chalipko mentioned and, and Mrs. Evans, the Kapaus Avenue pool, I too have, have an interest in seeing that pool open. That way they're all open for the children this summer and that one's been closed the longest. And I believe they have a large group of, of children that are more than eligible in that area. Um, I'm offering my help, my services, and uh, I will be getting a hold of uh, Mary tomorrow to see what we can do on that. So I hope that comes into fruition. We have a lot of uh, heavy work to do in a short amount of time. But I commit myself to Mary and the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association on that. And secondly, uh, the same person had mentioned the zoning board meeting last night. Uh, I, I, I have satellite TV, so I really haven't seen any of our municipal meetings or anything like that since 2007. On occasion, I will stop at my mother's home and she'll be watching them and I'll sit down with her. Well, it so happened that last evening, I ran to the store and I stopped at her home later in the evening. I, I believe it was probably well after 8 o'clock. And she happened to have the meeting on. And it was just starting the point about uh, what uh, Ms. Chalipko was, was expressing about the, a group of developers that have taken over some properties. And uh, the zoning board was looking to appeal or to uh, repeal their, their permits. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen any of their meetings as I stated and, and I have to say I was impressed. To me, that meeting seemed like good government in action. There were a lot of hard questions asked, a lot of eye-opening things happened at that meeting. I was glued to my, the edge of my seat. I felt myself there in Mr. Coaches's position when he was relating his frustration on his question as to why there's a zoning board when people up or downstairs and upstairs override them and do things without their knowledge. You know, many of you have seen me here with my frustration saying the same thing. What are we doing here when we do things and are totally ignored? Finally, some of this is coming to light. And I think it was an eye opener what happened last night. Now, I don't know the parties on either side of this situation last night. I personally don't. And I don't know what the results are, but it did open up my eyes. Well, I've seen a lot, so my eyes have been open, but I think it opened up a lot of the public's eyes. And hopefully, you'll tell your friends, relatives, any taxpayer in this city to watch the replays of that zoning ordinance meeting, and you'll see what we've been fighting against in our term here. Has this been going on for the last 12 years? I can't say. It appears to be, but I can't say. Um, it, it appears, and, and, and again, I believe it was maybe three, four weeks ago, right here in this seat, I expressed my frustration. I said the haves and the have-nots. Basically what I mean are the connected and the non-connected. Non I expressed my frustration that day because I had heard from individuals that were trying to fix up properties and buy properties that do excellent work. I've seen their work. I've seen their product that were done nothing but harassed by the zoning, by lips, 
and every other entity in the city because they were not connected. And, and you that's, know, we'll but I'm sorry, I, but you just triggered something. And you know, I would just add to that, and I'm not, I'm not complaining, I'm just s stating a fact that when there are problems, for example, brought to LIPS, the director of LIPS is well known now for telling individuals, oh, city council did that. When city council had nothing to do with that, wasn't even aware of that, and that type of issue would never even come before city council because it's not anything that falls under our jurisdiction. But, and that went on with the previous DPW director as well. Any issue over anything? Oh, city council did that. Don't blame me. They did that. But none of these people take their orders from us. They all take their orders from the mayor. And there's a hierarchy. But we have nothing to do with it. So, you know, I think that needed to be said at long last because, um, you know, count, this council is frankly the one that, because there was power in numbers, was able to expose the finances. And then the house came tumbling down, the way the finances were mismanaged. And then the banks knew what was going on all along with the administration and the Pennsylvania Economy League. And one thing led to another. So there has been gr much accomplished, great accomplishments, but it's nice to see, as Mr. Loscom said, that all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together now and that, you know, despite what is written in the newspaper and what fails to be written in the newspaper. I think the people now, after all these years, are seeing the light and maybe recognizing how hard this fight has been on your behalf. Thank you. And just to continue, I do commend Mr. Coaches. I mean, I don't know him personally. I've never met him. Uh, that was the first I've ever seen him when I watched the TV last night, to be honest with you. But he asked some good, hard questions, and I could see his frustration building up and building up. And I said, boy, that's me. Uh, but he did ask the right questions, and he asked for the same thing that the people, the attorney at this table was asking for, a level playing field for everybody. It shouldn't be the way it's been. That's why we're in the position we're in. A level playing field for everyone. And I would hold our next mayor to those same rules. The minute they start to sway, as long as I'm here, I'm going to fight against it. Everybody should have an equal opportunity here. And that's something that has been neglected for a long time. I've known it. It's been a dirty little secret here. Now. To preface that, I'm not accusing the gentlemen that were here for their permits of any of that, but it did seem that they had the accessibility that the average person does not have. And it did seem that, and Mr. Wallace admitted it, he was forced basically to sign that document. Uh, and this is something that I don't believe a lot of people even know exists, a certificate of non-compliance or non-conformance. I'm not sure which, which one it was. But they were able to take a condemned property off the rolls that if you or I were to purchase, would have to go through, a, and, and they were given the list. That's the first thing that, that they were given, and they have to go through a whole list, posting bonds, bringing everything up to code, going to zoning. If a property is vacant for X amount of time, and it's a four-unit family, a four-unit dwelling, and it was originally a single unit, it's a single unit. They can't just go back and put four in it. They have to go to zoning for that approval, for parking and everything. But by going with that certificate of noncompliance, it appears that they thought they could just end around the whole circle, go to the top, and, and 
And Mr. Wallace mentioned that he was told to sign that letter by uh, the paralegal in the office, Ms. Mariotti, or Mrs. Uh, Seitzinger, I'm sorry. Uh, and I mean, those, I'm not saying anything that wasn't stated at the meeting last night. Uh, apparently, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Seitzinger met with these developers and gave them their approval over Mr. Wallace's, uh, you know, over his head. And so the attorney asked who was running the zoning office, the legal department or the zoning officer. It was very, very eye-opening. I mean, again, working here, we've seen it behind the scenes, and we've been batting our heads against that stone wall, unable to accomplish anything. But now, I think it's starting to become exposed piece by piece on what's been going on. And, and, and I was, you know, I'm very disappointed that it even had to go to that. But I'm glad it came to that. I'm glad the exposure is there. And it's not business as usual anymore. Everybody has to have a fair shot at anything. And I heard them say, that, you know, it gets very frustrating for, for developers to come into this town with all the rules and regulations and all that. Well, all I can say is, how do you think those people feel that do go by the rules and regulations and the others go around? You know, follow the rules, follow the regulations, you'll have no problem. Ironically, a gentleman came in right afterwards to uh, develop a home winery. He had all the facts laid out, he had all the pictures, he presented a nice thing. And he was approved. I mean, it's as simple as that. He showed the parking. That's all the zoning board is asking. But, you know, there's certain things done, have been done certain ways for so long that I think people expect them to continue that way. And it's not going to be that way. And, and I really appreciate the zoning board taking a hard look at that last night. And they've opened a lot of eyes. And, and what, what really got me going, I had a call today on someone who was trying to purchase the city property. For three years now, he could have had his new house on there and taxes paid to the city for a third year now. And he's still getting nowhere with the same person that rushed to get that document signed by Mr. Wallace. So there's something wrong up there. If you don't belong, if you're not in the clique, you're not going anywhere. And I'm not afraid to say that because that's exactly the way it is. I'm not in the clique. Never was, never want to be, never will be. But everybody should have a fair shot. It shouldn't be one against the other. The connected and the non-connected. And that's why I get frustrated here. And I did ex experience that frustration. And Mr. Coaches last night, who I've never met in my life, but uh, he felt the same way about upstairs and downstairs overriding everything that is done by people that are elected and appointed to do their jobs. That's, that's the frustration. And hopefully something will come out of it. Um, and, and again, that, that person, like I said, we could have properties on the tax rolls, but they worry about this stuff where we're losing money because it's taking care of certain individuals. And again, I hope that's not the case in this, in this matter, but I've seen it, I've heard it. I've witnessed it, I've experienced it. And uh, you know, and I can't be retaliated on any more than I have been already, so I have nothing to lose by coming out. I just hope enough people are strong enough to, to come out. My email is right on the city council on the city's website, go to city council, anyone who has ha run into these problems with these departments that I have spoken about or anything similar to that, please email me because I'm putting together a file on the information and the details of what your situation was. And, and, and with that, I mean, I don't know if this is in order or what, but would it be appropriate to launch some type of an investigation on on the law department running the zoning 
not giving the zoning officer the opportunity to, to do what he has to do, but telling him what he has to do. I, I don't know. Is there a department we can have investigate this? Because I think this is only the tip of the iceberg. And I don't think this should be continued. And from seeing what I've seen, I think it's been going on a long time, far too long. And that's my opinion. But I think the time is now to start looking at some of this stuff and find out why things have been done the way they've been done and stop them from continuing right now. But if someone did something illegally or something wrong, if there was coercion done there, that's illegal. Is it racketeering? I don't know. But I do think somebody should investigate this. I'm not a legal mind, so I can't say who or who could authorize it or what. Can I ask our solicitor if there's any advice on that? Is there any agency or government agency that would look into something like this? Not that I'm aware of. Um I didn't see the I didn't see the zoning meeting last night. It's my understanding that there's a previous litigation over this. There was a court opinion that said that there was a prior nonconforming use. Um, I think that what we'll just have to see how this plays out uh, with an appeal process. And it'll be up to the courts, um, you know, to decide that. But um, and that could be an issue before the court. Is the, I, I, from excuse the, me, Mr. Hughes. I, I'm not talking about the conforming use, and I'm talking about the use of our law department basically telling the zoning officer what to do. That's on a record. I have no idea. I, I have no idea what was said. The zoning Until officer there's a transcript. his advice signed that paper. That's well, on the record. I know what I read in the paper. I know what some people have said, but until there's a transcript and you can review a transcript, you know, I'm not going to give any advice on that issue. Um, because without knowing the full circumstances of what happened, I mean, obviously the zoning board, uh, you know, they, they denied the permit. Or I think they sustained the appeal uh, from, uh, that was taken by, taken by the neighbors. But uh, until you see the transcript and what was said and, and what the, the issues are, um, I, I can't really give any advice on that right now. Thank you. And I believe that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I have only a few brief items to address. First, Scranton City Council thanks the Scranton Housing Authority for its 2013 payment in lieu of taxes in the amount of $30,163.46. We encourage all nonprofits <clears throat> located within city limits to donate a fair share contribution to help our distressed municipality continue to provide the public services that are received by all. Second, I wish to provide updates regarding pool openings. According to Mark Dewar, DPW director, there are 27 applicants for lifeguard positions. Orientation was conducted on June 13th, and a free certification program will be offered, which will ultimately determine hiring and dates of pool openings. On the other hand, I spoke with the mayor, who stated that the NAOG pools would open this weekend followed by the opening of two neighborhood pools on June 29th. The opening of any remaining pools is contingent upon the hiring of a necessary number of lifeguards. In past years, for example, the city hired 140 lifeguards to open all city pools, according to the mayor. He remains optimistic that applicants will continue to become available. And keeping that in mind, once again, I suggest that the volunteers and council members interested in repairing the Powell's Avenue pool 
schedule that meeting as soon as possible and, ha and go in with your plan. Third, a resident of Lake Scranton Road contacted our council office on June 12th to report that the truck traffic along Lake Scranton Road has resumed. There were very few trucks traveling that road while the traffic study was being conducted. Now that the study has concluded, the trucks are back in full force. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if you'd please notify Civil Crossroads of this change in traffic patterns immediately. And, you know, this is, this is just uh, another example of where City Council fights for city residents and their quality of life. And we have taken on big people, big guys, mountains to help people. And, uh, you know, it's not just this case where the powerful ignore the law. It's been happening over in Bellevue for the last 15 years. Everybody just ignores the laws passed by city councils, past and present. And uh, I often get very downtrodden about circumstances like this because I've spent 10 years fighting against them and fighting for little people against these rich and powerful. And uh, Mrs. Crake, I have to thank for reminding me that in most cases, people wouldn't even try. They'd just give up and say, that's the way it is. But we never did that. I never did that. And then another wise man who sits somewhere over to my right told me something that I'm never going to forget. When I discuss these situations with him, he tells me, never forget the golden rule. And of course, you and I know the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So I really couldn't understand what he was saying. And he said, you know the golden rule. The guy with the gold rules. And that's true. But you still have to try. You still have to keep fighting. And eventually, you know, David took down Goliath, so it might take years, might take 10 years, 12 years, people who started it and sticking with it over a decade. But it's coming. It's been happening. Um, Thank you. Oh, my goodness. And someone has reminded me that Flag Day is tomorrow, June 14th. So I hope we are all proudly flying our flags and honoring this country and those who serve it and sacrifice for all of us. Uh, next, we did receive responses to citizens' requests from Mr. Dewar, DPW Director, and Mr. Poshus, City Engineer. In regard to the installation of no parking signs at the corner of Penn Avenue and Linden Street, where parking meters were removed, Mr. Dewar states that he is working with PennDOT on these signs. Regarding the placement or repainting of no parking signs in front of 927 and 945 South Main Avenue, Mr. Dewar responds that he will install new signs. And in response to a request for a status update of the Rockwell Avenue Bridge, Mr. Poshus, Vice President of SECO Associates Incorporated states, and he's also the city engineer, this project is currently under review by PennDOT. Buckhart Horn is addressing their comments. 
The project is scheduled for a let date of September 11th, 2013, with the anticipated notice to proceed for construction in October 2013. And finally, I have citizens' requests for the week. According to residents of Pond Avenue, the 2300 block of Pond Avenue is separated by a hill and the 2300 of North Main. Grass is very high and garbage has accumulated on this hill, including a mattress that has remained for several years and is located nearer to North Main Avenue. The view of drivers on Pond and Dean Streets, as well as on North Main Avenue, is obstructed by this grass and garbage. Please clear this area ASAP as it is a pressing safety hazard. City Council reviewed a list of complaints from city residents concerning Meadow Avenue in the East Mountain area. And I'll provide this list to our office following tonight's meeting for the request to be forwarded to the appropriate city departments. And um, Ms. Schumacher, I would ask you if you could please, since you were the one who brought the issue of the no parking signs at Linden and Penn, if you can keep your eye on that and update us because this has to be addressed. It can't just sit and sit and sit until a new administration comes in. Exactly. We've got to just keep at it and keep at it until they do it. So I'd appreciate your help. And that's it. Uh, Mrs. Evans, if, if I may, I know uh, Mr. Joyce was going to mention the property that Mr. Losco mentioned. Uh, he had it there, and since he's a absent this evening due to illness, um, would it be uh, appropriate if a council person could request a letter be sent to the law department? If someone wants to make that request, then our I'll office I'll make could. the request. Thank, thank On you behalf very of much. council, please send that letter to the law department. I apologized. I should have requested it. <laughs> but I okay. got carried away, mm -hmm. as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. 5B, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to grant a special encroachment permit to Mulligan Sports and Spirits to operate an outdoor restaurant at 519 Linden Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 29, 2013, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept, receive, and record a gift of real estate from MFP Realty, LLC, consisting of a parcel at the intersection of Kapaus Avenue and Marion Street on the northeast corner of said intersection to provide for additional parking in the neighborhood. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, I know we had some questions about this last week, and I, I also see in the notes that we're, um, somebody is going to make a motion to table it. Um, have we received any more information about this project, or? Um, no, the, other than um, we, ha we did receive two responses from the individuals that uh, we requested to attend. I know that Mr. Falzette is anxious to attend, and M Attorney Penitar of the Zoning Board has indicated that he will attend. Yeah. But I'm waiting to hear from um, Mr. Wallace, from um, the owners of, of NADA, from OECD, I think we might want to have um, someone from OECD there uh, who can uh, speak to the grant mm -hmm. that has been applied for. So as soon as we can get all of those people together, that public caucus will happen and then we can return we can, it to the Yeah, because I, I did hear that it was, that this was part of a larger project and somebody asked mm -hmm. if it was, you know, the the development of that area and uh, I was told that yes it was it, that's part of what something it bigger so, that, thank you for clarifying and uh, there might um, be some will, type of a I don't want to say a mall but 
uh, yes, a, sh a, dis a shopping district. Right. Thank you. Okay. And that's the only reason we're going to table it to mm -hmm. give them Wait chance for to information. get information. Right. But back on <laughs> the sixth order approval, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. At this time, I would like to make a motion to table item 6A. Second. Um, there is a motion on the floor to table item 6A and a second on the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 30, 2013, an ordinance, amending file of council number 54, 1986, entitled, an ordinance providing for handicapped parking areas where official signs indicate, defining and prescribing penalties, providing for enforcement thereof, by adding a section providing for a program for the Scranton Police Department to monitor a renewal process on its application for handicapped parking signs. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. Yes, Mr. Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seven? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't hear her say seventh door. I'm sorry. Um, I did this in fifth, but I guess I, I would like to make a motion to take resolution number 20, 2013 from the table. Seven parentheses A, or parentheses seven A from the table. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seven A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, resolution number 20, 2013, previously tabled, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Horsepower Harley-Davidson Incorporated to lease five police package motorcycles. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Evans. Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Mrs. Evans, we're going to need a temporary chair since 7B is community development. Um, I would like to nominate Mr. McGough. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Eight. 7B has already been taken from the table during motions by Councilman Lasco. Seven, excuse do me. We have a, do we have a copy of it? Yes. Please. Thank you. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, Resolution number 22, 2013, previously tabled, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for the University of Scranton, 800 Linden Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for demolition of Leahy Hall, to include courtesy review by the HARB for public incorporation of the Linden Street portico, public recognition of the 1907 building via exhibit photo and text, including acknowledgement of the YWCA building and its role in the city at 630 Linden Street and 235 Jefferson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. What is the recommendation of the chair for the committee on, or the acting chair for the committee <laughs> on community development? As acting chair, I recommend final passage of item 7A, or 7B, excuse me. Second. On the question. I, it was my under in, in speaking with someone from HARB, um, it was my understanding that they were submitting um, some recommendations for changes 
that they that there was an understanding that they could not re, uh, rescind the vote accepting uh, the, the demolition, but that they were to include some recommendations for um, mitigation um, that were not included. Um, and um, that's why I asked if there was a copy. I, I didn't see Well, I think what, what I know what you're speaking of, and that, that's correct. That did occur. And um, a meeting was held, a vote was taken to submit the um, revisions to city council, which was then sent to Ms. Lori Reed, the secretary treasurer, who didn't attend the meeting and hasn't responded to the request of the five members. But I think, um, you know, I set that aside tonight based on the fact that the zoning board has denied the University of Scranton's um, exception. And um, I'm going to stand by and support the decision of the zoning board. But these are two, they're, they're two different things. Uh, we're not voting on a, a variance. Um, this, this is only the acceptance of uh, a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the demolition of Leahy Hall. It has nothing to do with um, the variance that was um, denied by the zoning board. Uh, well, they're, I, they're two separate Yes, but I two don't separate think, issues. I don't think we should be approving or accepting anything regarding this project when the, the zoning board itself has not approved the project. So as I said, I'm just going to um, respect and abide by the decision of the zoning board and follow suit. And, and, and I but, just feel, uh, as I stated previously, that, uh, you know, wait for the zoning board to make their decision. Of course, they're two different, two different things. However, by us approving this here, it gives them the right to tear down a building, so therefore there could be an empty lot sitting there and maybe never an, an, an approval for any improvement at this point. So I just don't see the wisdom in that at this point either. I mean, if they get approval from zoning board, we could always redo this. Madam President, uh, I was just going to comment on what Mr. Loscombe said. Um, the fact that the zoning board has denied the variance for the development of the project based on the site requirements of the city zoning ordinance, uh, that if this were approved tonight, that it would give the university the go-ahead to demolish these buildings. And if you remember at last week's meeting, um, I forget who the gentleman was, but Mr. Devers. Mr. Devers requested that mm -hmm. in anticipation. Well, I, in, in, he that was his request, and of course, you know, council said, "Let's wait and see what the zoning board does." If you would approve that last week, they could go ahead with having these buildings demolished. Um, I thought there were two separate buildings there. There's really one building. It looks like they were built at two different times. Um, and I don't know what Leahy Hall is, if that's the YWCA, and then the adjoining building, which I think were apartments that were built later. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the building, um, it looks like the Y was, there's a building there in the front that faces um, that faces uh, Linden Street mm -hmm. that has one architectural style. Then, as you go down Jefferson Avenue, there's an entirely different architectural style that's right. attached to it. I thought what he was requesting last week was to demolish the other one, you know, that, that, that is the residence. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, Mr. Loscombe is, is accurate that if this were done, Harb has approved the demolition and what would you do with the portico? I still don't understand where the portico was going to go, but that where would, you know, where would you put it in a building that might not be built? Mm -hmm. um, so that I, I remember that we did this, wasn't with the uh, 
National Association of Historic Trust on the for the Casey Parkway when that was uh, authorized to be demolished uh, for the hotel. No, actually, it wasn't to be demolished. It was just to make an opening from the hotel into the garage so that you would not have to drive back out on Adams Avenue and then go in the old Casey garage. It took us 10 months to get that approved out of the National Preservation Historic Trust in Washington, D.C. And we had to create a museum in there, or at least some areas, and save some of the leaded glass in that that was yes. in the old waiting room. Um, I don't know whatever happened to that after the Casey garage was demolished, but uh, obviously, you know, that wasn't done. I mean, we were just, at that time, the plan was just to, just to knock a hole in the wall so that the cars could go directly into the garage through the old waiting room. And all those doors and everything had to be saved and put up. Uh, I think they're probably up in some demolition landfill now. But, you know, Mr. Loskin is 100% correct on that. So uh, if that were approved tonight, the University of Scranton would have to go ahead to have that building demolished. Thank you. At least in my opinion. Roll call, please. Uh, well, I, I, I just, I did have other, another comment. Uh, just to finish. Uh, number one, the, the, the idea that they would demolish the building and not put anything there, I believe, is um, borders on ludicrous that um, they, they have a need for the building and something would be built. Um, and I think that by, you know, any, any attempt to, to deny this is um, at a great cost to the city um, in, in terms of, um, you know, permits and fees. And uh, while we may laugh at uh, something like $5 million and think it's uh, a joke, um, in the fees and permits that they paid for over the years, uh, I, I still think that um, that's a consideration. Plus, the jobs that would be created in the demolition and the construction of a new building would be um, very beneficial to the city of Scranton. And I think that um, we're just putting stumbling blocks in the way of um, progress and redevelopment. I I don't know if we could consider that if they tore it down, they wouldn't just leave an empty lot there. Uh, I mentioned several times they purchased a $27,000 house for $550,000 and tore it down and there sits an empty lot there. Apparently money is no object, but that's not my point. And, you know, I'm all for jobs. But again, as I mentioned earlier about the zoning and stuff like that, there's rules to follow. There's organizations they have to go through, architectural trusts and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, everybody, no matter who they are, should follow the same rules. And they are. Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Loskin? No. Mrs. Evans? No. Uh, I hereby declare item 7B defeated. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.